Hello everybody. So I um, got some requests on the last video with the terrain painting on uh, a couple of follow-ups that I can do to that. And uh, one of them was um, like an angle-based painting, you know, kind of slope um, type setup where um, I think it's called an auto material by, you know, people that are actually professionals. So um, um, let's um, let's get into that and, uh, and take a look at how we can do it. So uh, as you can remember we kind of left it off uh, as, uh, at this point in our last tutorial we had like three layers that we were painting the terrain with so we're gonna add a fourth but first in order to do that one thing that uh, I forgot to mention uh, because we were only doing three of them is once you go over three for whatever reason uh, in your material functions or I believe in any other setups when it comes to that, uh, you would have to select your textures and change your sampler, sor sampler source to be a shared wrap. So I'm going to do that for each one of these. And as you can see, I've already created, uh, I've duplicated my mossy ground and created this uh, rocky ground material function that I've assigned a couple of, of um, you know, the textures, a set of textures from Quixel which is, you know, a little bit of a rocky surface type uh, uh, texture. Okay, so we have this one changed to shared wrap. Let's do the other four as well. So shared wrap. And let's save these. And as well, shared wrap. And then shared wrap. All right, perfect. So let's make sure that every one of these is saved since I skipped over that one. Okay. Well, so back into our master material, as you can see, we kind of left it off uh, at this point uh, back in the last tutorial. So once this is done saving, any time now, Hopefully, uh, I don't get a crash on my uh, <laughs> uh, old, old PC here. So, let's go ahead and um, add our uh, additional layer. So, I'm going to duplicate this one here and just place it right there. Let's call it Rocky Ground. Use our Rocky Ground uh, material function. Uh, let's make sure that I'm placing these under uh, Rocky Ground Group. And let's rename them. So we have Rocky there. And there. Let's do all of these here. So. almost there there we have it finally okay well so uh, I'm gonna move these around a little bit in order for us to blend between these what we're gonna need to use is a world aligned blend so what that's gonna help us with is we're gonna provide a couple of values one of them is gonna be the blend sharpness so let's create a scalar so I'm just holding down S and, and pressing the left mouse button. And this one's going to be blend sharpness. Uh, so we have blend sharpness right there. And we'll do another one. And this one's going to be our bias. Blend bias. As far as the default values, the ones that I've noticed work Best in my case for the sharpness, I'm using um, a, five, a value of five, and the blend bias, I'm using a value of negative 1.51 right in that area. Okay, just gonna save this one real quick. 
Let's add our new layer. Uh, so for this one, what I've been uh, using is, first of all, let's name it as Rocky Brown. So I've been using just uh, the regular weight blend. This has worked for me. Um, you could potentially try the, the one of the other options, but um, as you will be able to see, this actually works out pretty nicely. Okay, uh, I believe if you choose the height blend, it might use that in your blending, but um, I haven't tried that yet, uh, so I'm, I can't vouch for it. All right, so layer blend. Uh, we'll, for our roughness, let's add another one, and this one is going to be uh, called our rocky ground, and then our normal. And let's add that new layer and call it rocky ground. Okay, well, so how are we going to blend between these? We're going to use alert nodes. So if you type in linear interpolate, have it right there. We're going to need three of these because we have, uh, you know, we have normal, we have roughness, and we have base color. Well, uh, so one thing to note is that at this point, once we do um, the blending between these, our rock uh, ground is only going to apply based on the world aligned blend. As you can see, the world aligned blend provides a couple of sets of alphas. So um, Let's plug these in. So first of all, we're going to have our base. Then we have our roughness. And for our normal, uh, I have been using with explicit normals. Using one, using the alpha actually throws an error uh, once you connect them all together. So I've been using with explicit normals. All right, let's, let's hook up some of these nodes. So first of all, we're going to have our base color from our rocky ground. And then the base color from our mossy ground. I'm going to be blending with the mossy ground because, you know, um, just from going outside and walking around and, and, and you know, uh, in nature, you'll probably notice that um, most of it you'll have, you know, there's like a mossy ground on the top of the rock, you know, kind of like the rocky hill and, uh, you know, kind of mossy at the bottom. So you can choose some of the other ones. It's totally up to you. This is what I went with. It seems to be working fine for me. Okay, well, then we have our roughness and our roughness from our mossy ground. And then we need to plug in our normal. So we have normal and normal from here. Okay, and each one of these is going to go in their base color. So we have the base color for the rocky, the roughness, uh, there we go, roughness. And then the normal. Okay, so as I was saying, if you use the alpha, this one should, it, uh, when I was testing this out, it did uh, uh, throw a little bit of an error when I was using the regular alpha. And let's see if that is still the case. Apparently, it's not so much. Oh, did I use it in the wrong one? I think I did it in the right one. So as soon as this uh, uh, finishes saving, apparently it doesn't throw an error here. Um, so I'm going to keep the explicit normals because um, it's worked. Uh, like I said, it threw an error um, the first time I've used it, and I'm, uh, I'm not entirely sure if... Uh, that was necessarily the case. Let's space these out a little bit more. Just like that. Okay, so now we have our rocky ground, which we have everything connected here. Um, so that should be all we need for our um, uh, angle-based painting. So the shaders are going to compile, and we'll go ahead and try and uh, sculpt the terrain, you know, paint some of uh, this new layer info that we have, and hopefully it will only show up on our slopes. So let's get, go into our paint 
uh, layer here and I'm noticing that it's not showing up here so sometimes what I would have to do is uh, let's try and assign right now it's our um, our terrain is using the instance I'm just gonna quickly add the um, the master and there you go it shows up right there let's go back and uh, re-add our material instance because we have control over all these other NFT settings like roughness and height or uh, you know normal intensity okay well let's get into painting uh, one thing that uh, you know you need to do is add a uh, weight blended layer so uh, it already exists uh, so in that case let's select it I guess I've already created in um, one of my past attempts at creating this tutorial. All right. One thing that I do, like I I, uh, I was doing, is uh, I was actually using this to fill the layer. And as you can see, right now everything is flat, so um, we're not going to get uh, anything as far as the rocky surface until we start sculpting. So let's go ahead and start sculpting. And as you can see, it's already there. We have our um, our rocky uh, kind of uh, texture showing up on uh, some of these uh, angled surfaces. And there we go, we can add a little bit more here to have a better look at it. There you go, I think that's actually pretty interesting. So let's go back into painting. And uh, one thing that I wanted to show you is that, for example, right now, if you were to go and paint the swamp water, you can paint all the other textures or the other layers anywhere you'd like. But if you were to paint the rocky ground, this would only be painted on that angled surface, which was, uh, as I mentioned, determined by our blend bias and blend sharpness. So there's kind of a uh, little bit of uh, uh, tweaking that you might have to do depending on the angle you want that texture to show on. So. Um, that's uh, that's totally up to you as far as uh, where you wanna where you wanna play with. So I'm just gonna paint a little bit of um, you know some some other details here just to kind of you know fill in the scene so so to speak. So there you have it. Um, I think that is gonna be it for this tutorial. If you guys have uh, any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Uh, I have a you know I have a regular day job, so it might not be very very quick but um but yeah hopefully this um this helps some of you guys out and um and like i said uh all you needed to, to add is this little blend node in here and the lerp nodes between um the base colors of the two um layers that you want to uh blend based on on the slope so there you have it um, well, until the next one, uh, which hopefully is going to be something related to uh, parallax occlusion mapping slash tessellation. I need to do a little bit of research on that because I haven't used it. I've seen it on some projects, uh, but it was quite uh, impactful on performance. So for my project, for example, I'm probably not going to end up using it. But um, until that, uh, until then, hopefully you guys enjoy it. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about it. Thank you so much. Bye.